Singapore is looking to double down on investment in emerging areas of tech like artificial intelligence while protecting citizens from online harms and digital risks. Now, it comes as the country embarks on its next phase of becoming a smart nation. The digital landscape today is vastly different from a decade ago when our first smart nation plan was launched. Smartphones and social media have become the main ways we communicate with each other. And perhaps the biggest change is the recent breakthroughs in generative AI. There will be tremendous opportunities ahead, but also new uncertainties and challenges to overcome. The strategy builds on three key goals to ensure reliability and trust in digital services and help the economy grow while not leaving anyone behind. Now, for one, new laws will be introduced to address risks like cooling system failures in critical digital infrastructure, as well as to keep people safe from online harms. There will also be more funding to grow the adoption of AI in some sectors and new classes for students and the workforce to better understand its limitations and abilities. Now, to ensure digitalization benefits all, there will also be new initiatives for citizens to pick up skills. More schemes will also be launched to rethink how Singaporeans connect with each other. Uh, stopping cyberbullying and intimate image abuse, that's the goal of a new government agency set up to address online harms. Singapore will be one of the first globally to form such an agency that is backed by a new law to improve protection for victims. Now, for one, the agency will act on the behalf of victims to get both perpetrators and service providers like social media companies to stop the online harm quickly. People have given feedback that companies could take some time to respond to the reports on online harm. Currently, victims can apply to court for a protection order or make a police report. But legal and criminal proceedings can take time. We will support victims of online harms with more timely and effective relief. They must be able to turn to a trusted source of support which can act on their behalf to direct perpetrators and service providers to put a stop to the harms. Existing victim support groups have welcomed the setup of this agency as it directly represents victims and comes with legal teeth. They hope it will be large enough to handle the demand. We think that this agency, together with other organisations in this ecosystem, for instance SG and Empowerment, will need to have the capacity and the capabilities to deal with this new demand. And so in that regard, we hope that the upcoming new measures and other support measures will be scalable and sustainable to be able to help more victims more effectively in the longer run. Come next year, teachers and students will get the chance to learn more about AI. A new AI for Fun module will be launched for students. It builds on the existing 10 hours of Code for Fun that's open to all primary and secondary schools. For teachers, a training fellowship will get them up to date on tech industry developments. This game looks simple enough, but the technology behind it is quite the opposite. These students control the rocket without ever touching the screen, a feat made possible by AI. Right now we are just doing this in a small scale, just like teaching them small things and applying it and being able to see how it's being manifested. Uh, therefore, it gives them a clearer picture on how uh, AI works. They're all part of a pilot for a new module called AI for Fun, which will be launched in schools next year. It's an optional module under the Code for Fun program and aims to expose upper primary and secondary students to the possibilities and risks of AI. It's really then an add-on to explicitly uh, or allow the students to actually see um, AI in action. They will, of course, still continue to learn about uh, the potential uh, risk of AI uh, as well as some of the broad applications. Uh, but, we, but given that it needs to be age appropriate, of course, we don't expect them to go into very technical details of like how AI actually works back end machine learning. Teachers will also get training in AI next year. Already, some teachers like Mr. Zohafiz Zainal use it to make teaching Malay more effective. But as technology advances rapidly, there is a need to help teachers stay up to date. 
That's where the Smart Nation Educator Fellowship comes in. It's a six-month program to help selected teachers learn about latest developments in tech and AI. We must, as educators, must keep at the forefront of what is happening in terms of the technologies that are being introduced in the industries. And we thought it will have potential when it is brought into our education system. So that was that is basically what the Smart Nation uh, Educator Fellowship is about. It's really about bringing our educators out. Both the AI for Fun module and the fellowship complement existing digital literacy efforts. Researchers in fields like health sciences, biomedical and advanced materials can look forward to a fresh round of funding to develop and adopt AI tools. It will come from a $120 million investment, part of a further push to make and use AI that can be applied across multiple domains of science. Led by the National Research Foundation, the initiative will also help researchers access and share relevant data sets to help them learn from each other. It's hoped that this will benefit local researchers and their international counterparts to develop new expertise in Singapore.